In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. As you are wondering and wearing rose color, not pink, not salmon, it's rose. Okay, that's the tradition. So today is Letare Sunday, which means that we take a break from our Lenten journey, from all the sacrifice and the ash and the cloth and all the depriving that we are doing of chocolate and wine and whatever we are giving up and then today we can take a break because it's a celebration preparing ourselves for our uh, Pasqual celebration. Now we try to be our best. We try to say the best things to ourselves and to others. We try to do our best for ourselves and others. But we fall short sometimes. Life gets in the way and everything derails. So let us acknowledge any time that we may have failed to be our best, say our best, or do our best. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have been in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my own spirit's fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray, and as we do so, we pray for James Wright, for whom this Mass is being offered today. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards a solemn celebration to come. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let him grow up. 
The Lord be with you. We will be the Holy Gospel and the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus said to me, Throughout the history of salvation, from the moment 
God revealed himself. It has been a testament of patience and patience. Because if we read the Old Testament, we see that God was teaching and God was proclaiming himself and God was revealing himself and people responded. But then they deviated, they moved away, they misinterpreted things and then God was really angry and punished them. And that's where the idea of punishment came. Like if we do something wrong, God will punish us. And some of us grew up with that mentality. I mean, I remember my grandmother saying, if you, you do this, you know, that's going to happen to you. So we grew up with this mentality of God punishing us. God sending us bad things for us to teach us a lesson. But, as we can see in the reality of God's being with us, that's not the case. God does not punish us. God does not send bad things to us. God does not really test us. No. God allows things to happen depending on our actions. And that's the reality of that's what Jesus is telling us about. Like when they say, treat others the way you want to be treated. So if we treat others the way we want to be treated, well, if we've been treated badly all our lives, so of course we only know those things, how to treat people that way. But if we've been treated well throughout our lives, so we learn to treat others better. But that's the reality. Our actions have consequences. Now, as we grow older, we come into a better understanding of life, and that gives us a new perspective of who God is. And then we see that God is not really the punisher, but God is loving and compassionate, and He forgives. And he wants the very best for us. I mean, the best thing is that he created us, that we are here. We don't know where we are here, but we are here. We didn't choose to be here, but we are here. And that's the reality. We are here to live our lives to the fullest, to the best of our ability, to the best of what we have. Now, some of us may have a good childhood, some of us may have a really bad childhood. But all that it is given, if given to the Lord, He will find for us the strength to endure and to learn to treat others well as we want to be treated well. So, yes, so God is not here to condemn, God is here to save us, to love us, to do and to give us the best that we have. I mean, our bodies are wonderful. Yes, sometimes they fail and sometimes they get sick, but your bodies or our bodies will do everything in our power to help us come back into balance. And sometimes we have sadness and we have uh, mourning and we have grief in our lives. But then our minds and our hearts will do everything in our power to move us back to balance. So, you see, not everything is as bad as it looks. We just have to learn to accept the love of God. Not the idea of punishment, but the idea of love. And what do we do? Well, we have this Lenten journey that helps us to share things that we don't need in our lives. To share big thoughts or beliefs or, or behaviors that we don't need in our lives anymore. And that way we become better. And that way we treat each other better. That's the key, isn't it? Treat others the, as well as we want to be treated ourselves. Easier said than done. But at least we strive to do.
to our rest. So let us pray. Let us pray that in the example of the reading today, we may be able to understand that God is not condemnation, that God is not punishment, that God is not angry, that God does not allow bad things to happen to us. But the opposite. God wants the very best for us. And if we accept that goodness, that grace, that love, that kindness that was proven by His only Son dying on the cross for all of us, that way we will be resurrected with Him on the third day after being in the darkness and coming into the light. Please stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all things, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but substantial to the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us take this opportunity to pray for our Holy Mother Church as we continue to be hope and kindness and compassion for all people in the world. We pray for our country and the world as we may be seeing a way out of this tragic pandemic that has taken away lives and way of living, financial security, and mental health for many people. That as we see the change of the season, we may see the change in our lives, in our society, in our, in our world. We pray for our community as the body of Christ tells us to be there for one another, check on one another, and support one another, as we are one body in Christ. We pray for our family, for our friends, for those people who need prayer, for those who ask us to pray for them today, but especially for those who have nobody in this world to pray for them. And finally, we pray for all the things that need healing in our lives, for all the things that we keep quiet and we know that we need God's help, that the Lord in His mercy may give us the light of love, kindness and compassion as we come out from the darkness into the light. We ask you, Lord, to listen to our prayers, to Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right unto us, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation. He has led the human race that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin, to the waters of regeneration, to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, as we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all hope. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the people, so they may become for us the body the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will give up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread through all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant James, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our own brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Mercy in us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. <coughs> The Savior's command, let us raise our hands towards heaven as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as with blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other safely the sign of your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. So just a reminder that the stewards are going to indicate when to come, if you come together so you can come at the same time and <coughs> not leave some social distancing in between, and then we do the one-way system.
body of it. Body of as we are on our social media today so for those who are unable to be here today we do a spiritual communion as we say my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament and I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come to me at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already here and I unite myself wholly to you never perfectly be separated from you. Ah.
Let us join our prayers. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, just a reminder that this next Tuesday at 7 p.m. it will be our Lenten Reconciliation Service because of restrictions and lockdown that we are still we are not able to do it like we usually do so we only can do it uh, through our Facebook because that's the only one that allows uh, live streaming uh, for YouTube you need to have like a thousand uh, people to uh, subscribers and we only have like 400 and something so they don't allow us to to do it live so that's the only way so uh, but we're gonna record it and then put it on YouTube later so it's going to be delayed but still will be do, do, doable uh, the stations of the cross are happening every Friday at 7 p.m. at Holy Trinity uh, oh well there's a BCYA sponsor sleep out that is going to happen on the 26th of March and it's gonna be led virtually from Walsingham House at Apples Week. This is Father Dominic doing his stuff. You know Father Dominic. You may have heard of him. So yeah, so just help out if you can. Uh, oh, it says the following notices are for St. Therese only. Okay, so cleaning at St. Therese. We need people to clean or help us clean the church. Uh, please contact Robert Burton. You know Robert? He's the one that has been doing it on his own for the last uh, few uh, months. So if you would like to help out cleaning the church, just talk to Robert. Uh, we have worked out to continue our donations for our food banks. So we will be collecting stuff, cans and pasta and all that kind of stuff. So things that are non-perishable. Uh, so we can deliver it to the food banks Okay, and then do we have any first Holy Communion children? No? Not yet? No, okay, very good. I think that's it for now. Oh it Says to be given as notices in order to attend any of the sacred treaty and services morning masses You will need to book a place by calling Sarah. We're not doing it online. But you have to call the deadline to book a place is, it will be Wednesday the 31st of March. And the time of the services are as follows. Thursday 1st of April, Monday, Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper at 8 p.m. at Holy Trinity. Friday 2nd of April, Good Friday, the service of the Lord's Passion, 3 p.m. at St. Therese, 3 p.m. at St. Basil's, 7 p.m. at Holy Trinity. Uh, Saturday 3rd of April, Holy Saturday, is going to be the Easter Vigil at 8 p.m. at Holy Trinity. We usually do it at, at St. Basil's, but we're doing it at Holy Trinity. And Sunday 4th of April, Easter Sunday, 8 a.m. Holy Trinity, 9 a.m. Uh, St. Therese, 9.30 Holy Trinity, 11.15 Holy Trinity, 12 midday at St. Basil's. Okay. And I think that concludes any announcements, uh, anything else? I think uh, Nick is going to be with the machine, if you can help us in that sense. Not yet. It's like the Oscars, you, just, you know, you, you put some music so it's like, that's time to stop. <laughs> anyway. No problem. So we do our best and hopefully, hopefully according to Father Daniel, the 21st of June is going to be taking all the tapes out and everything and everything is go back to normal and you can be sitting together and loving each other like we used to. I, don't, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to, you know, be comfortable with somebody that is sitting very close, but it's part of, you know, 
that recovery process. So have a lovely, lovely Sunday and a blessed week to come. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace, love, and mercy of our Lord. Oh, I, I almost forgot. On Tuesday, the 15th, the bishop turned 70, so just to let you know. And then that was actually Anne McCafferty's birthday as well. And it was my nephew's birthday as well who died. So, so there's quite a few good people that were born on that day. So just pray for those people as we celebrate their birthday, the earthly birthday and the heavenly birthday. God bless you.